Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to talk about another condition that can affect the blood vessels linking the heart to the lungs. And this is something called pulmonary hypertension. So increased blood pressure between the heart and the lung. So you may or may not know, but the heart has four chambers. And those are divided into the left heart and the right heart. Now, the left chambers of the heart, the left two chambers of the heart, they pump the blood from the heart to the rest of the body. The right side of the heart, the chambers on the right side of the heart, they pump blood coming from the rest, back from the rest of the body and pumping it into the lungs. Now, the artery that connects the heart, the right side of the heart, to the lungs is called the pulmonary artery. Now, when there is increased pressure in this artery, there can be a lot of complications. There can be a lot of situations clinically that we need to identify. Most patients who suffer with pulmonary hypertension, so increased pressure in this artery between the heart and the lungs, they may experience severe breathlessness on exertion. They may also have low oxygen. This may lead to complications related to the heart, related to the lungs, respiratory failure, and so on. So it's a fairly serious condition, and it only takes very slightly elevated pressures to compromise the circulation that is in a series, as, you, as I've been explaining before. So the blood needs to come back from the rest of the body, be pumped through the, uh, the lungs to be oxygenated, and then return to the left side of the heart, go back to the rest of the body, and the cir circle continues. So obviously, to keep this going, the pressures need to be balanced. Now, there is no way to directly measure the pressure between the, uh, the heart and the lungs unless we do invasive procedures. So that means inserting a catheter through the, through the veins that goes into the pulmonary artery and actually measures the pressure. But that's not something that we do routinely unless we have a very clear suspicion. An ultrasound of the heart can sometimes do, however, raise the possibility that pulmonary hypertension is something that's going on. So that being said, I'd like to just tell you now a little bit about causes for pulmonary hypertension because it's something that you may want to consider. So the first thing, there are about five main groups, let's say, of causes of pulmonary hypertension. The first group is just pulmonary arterial hypertension, where it can be without a cause. So sometimes we have idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. We don't know the cause. Sometimes it can be genetic. So there may be families in which this is more prevalent. It can sometimes be linked to HIV infection. It can sometimes be linked to something I've discussed in a previous video called connective tissue diseases or CTDs. So these are conditions in which there is inflammation in various parts of the body and it can affect uh, sometimes the, the blood vessels as well. So it may lead to pulmonary arterial hypertension. So I think that's one thing to, to mention. The second major cause of pulmonary hypertension is left-sided heart disease. So I was talking about the left side of the heart, the right side of the heart. Now, if the left side of the heart is actually affected by heart failure or there has been some congenital malformation that causes the left heart to not function properly or there is a valvular issue so for example the the aortic valve doesn't open properly or doesn't shut properly this may eventually lead to back pressure and increased pressure in the pulmonary artery as well so this is one common cause the other thing would be the third group would be pulmonary hypertension which is related to chronic respiratory disease. So respiratory conditions that are quite advanced, there is a reduction in the amount of functioning lung. So therefore the blood needs to pass through less space and that leads generally to increased pressure. So this can happen in severe COPD, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It can happen in interstitial lung diseases associated with lung fibrosis or scarring of the lungs. This can also lead to pulmonary hypertension in severe cases. And obviously, there is also the possibility if someone is in an environment with, in an environment with very low oxygen, the pulmonary um, high tension increases. So the pressure in the pulmonary artery increases because of a reflex, actually, of constricting the vessels in the presence of low oxygen. So it's something that's a little bit more complex, but it's also very, very interesting. The other thing I would mention, the fourth group is very, very important. So when you have pulmonary hypertension, which is related to an obstruction in the blood vessel, 
itself. So the artery is obstructed between the heart and the lungs. And this can often happen when someone develops a pulmonary embolism. So a clot, for example, from the veins in the leg or the pelvis can move up through the veins, go through the heart, go into the pulmonary artery, and then get lodged somewhere in a smaller vessel in the lung. When that happens, obviously the blood needs to flow around that clot, so there's a bit of a blockage, so the pressure rises. So this is again a major potential cause. Now, there is also a fifth group where we have pulmonary hypertension of multifactorial causes. So basically we have multiple causes that can lead to pulmonary hypertension. It's not just the one condition. So someone may have a little bit of um, restrictive lung disease, lung scarring. They may also have COPD. They may have heart disease as well. There, there may be a clot involved. So all of these things can come together and sometimes lead to basically having pulmonary hypertension. Now the good news is there are treatments available for pulmonary hypertension. They tend to work quite well to reduce the pressure and improve symptoms because this is the main problem in patients who suffer with pulmonary hypertension. They are very, very symptomatic. They are quite breathless on minimal amounts of exertion of effort. So obviously putting them on a treatment that improves their breathing can help a lot. Oxygen is really important as well, especially ambulatory oxygen. So oxygen given as needed when someone is ready to do something. And I mentioned briefly in the video about that reflex that constricts the blood vessels when oxygen is low in the air. So obviously supplementing the oxygen to make sure that the, you know, your blood's well oxygenated can reduce the amount of pulmonary pressure. So that's actually quite interesting. And then obviously, if there are underlying diseases that need to be treated, for example, if there's a valvular issue in the heart, perhaps an intervention can help alleviate that. Or if there is a clot that's lodged in the lungs, sometimes an operation can be done to remove that clot, and it can improve the situation. Or if there are conditions in the lung which need proper treatment or heart failure needs to be treated with medication, these things can also be acted on. So hopefully this was a nice overview about what is pulmonary hypertension and what are the causes. And if you have further questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to make more videos like this one to clarify things. Thank you for watching.